Thanks for coming to uh, Surviving Technology Disasters. Um, maybe a little bad name. This is not, oh, I bought the wrong printer. Now what do I do? This is something that's happened to my infrastructure in a disaster situations, fire, flood, earthquake, any of those. So in managing uh, servers and infrastructure, generally there's three main pillars you need to be concerned about. Uh, security is certainly one, <coughs> which of course has all sorts of subsets to it, whether it be antivirus, firewall, um, identity verification. Um, power, you want to make sure that your servers, if they're running, that, um, that if you have a power outage, that they shut down gracefully and they come up good, and um, that you monitor that uh, you're not, brownout conditions aren't going directly to your servers and uh, damaging components. And the last one to that is backup for data protection. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So as I alluded to on, on the talk invitation, invitation there's a, the importance of data protection is that it can have a devastating impact on your business. So 40% of the businesses um, never reopen after a disaster. Um, of those that do, 29%, only 29% were operating after they reopened. Um, and another fact more related specifically to information technology <coughs> is that those companies that were out without their IT for nine or more days, uh, a majority of them declared bankruptcy within a year. Um, so in this talk, I, I also want to kind of get across that there are many nuances and, and variations um, Although we try to put things in boxes, it's more of a continuum, and I think you'll kind of get that as we go through the, the different subjects. So there's three levels with inside uh, data protection. There's just raw data backup, disaster recovery, and business continuity. So the goal of data backup is just to get a copy of your data from one place to another place so that if the primary place goes away, you can get it back. Pretty simple concept. Um, one variation inside of this is that people often confuse or, uh, or run together um, backup and archive. While they're similar, they're different. I mean, backup is just getting a copy of your data somewhere to get it back. But archiving is more a concept of, do I need to see this file as of this date? You, you can do those two things with separate products, or if you design it right, your backup solution can also be an archiving solution. In disaster recovery, the, the goal is to, okay, you have this backup of your data, now you wanna get it up and running so that you can continue operating your business while your primary systems are still unavailable. So if you have a fire in your primary business, how, how do you get your, all that data that you have backed up, operating so that you can actually run your business with it. And business continuity is more a nuance with inside uh, disaster recovery so that you can get your uh, business up, up again in almost real time as well as uh, fail back uh, gracefully when, once the disaster is passed. So let's take a look at a few backup types that there are. Um, so the first one, the simplest, is strictly file-based backup systems. So you know, good old XCopy and DOS, if you remember that. Um, RSync, which is more of a Unix-type product, uh, copy data between two Unix systems, um, as well as kind of some of those uh, just consumer-based externals, like uh, the Western Digital MyPass or CK. You can buy those drives, fries, you plug them in, software pops up, packs up to an external drive. So those are really file recovery only. They can't restore it an entire system generally. Um, and they're generally local only. So if that hard drive gets destroyed, your backup's destroyed too. Um, some current file-based cloud backups, uh, Carbonite, Mosey, CrashPlan. Um, those again are mostly file based, not really good for restoring whole systems. Um, one thing you want to be aware of on these is often they, the file types that they back up will be limited. So you want to make sure that the option to 
backup uh, videos is is enabled. Otherwise, you may do, be doing all this backup, and when you go to retrieve it, oh, you don't have that particular file that you need up in the cloud. <clears throat> Generally, they don't have a long uh, a local backup image, so they can take a, a a long time to upload or a long time to restore. Um, and the business packages on these can get really expensive fast. So, you know, you go 500 gigs or higher, which is often very common in businesses, these can get really expensive. Um, so another one is the legacy file system-based backups. So these are kind of the lower end ones. You, I don't know, you may remember some of these names or not, Yosemite Backup, NovaSoft, there was a backup exec uh, free edition or something like that. They'd often come with uh, products that you buy, computers that you buy, external drives, something like that. Again, primarily for file restoration. Theoretically, they could be used for system restores. Um, we did not have really good luck with those. So, kind of beware. Um, and generally, they have no Exchange or SQL Server granular backups. So if you have databases and you need to restore a database, just a particular database and keep your other ones, this probably isn't going to work for you. And again, local only. Uh, so another legacy system-based backups, but a higher tier. Uh, backup exec, Art Serve Net Backup. These started out probably 15, 10 years ago as primarily focused going to tape drives and they added support for external hard drives. Some of you, as I'm talking about these, may recognize these names and know that you've had these in your businesses or happening now. Um, later, they, they added on support for external hard drives, uh, network attack storage. Uh, again, primarily file-based, and I mean that in the sense that these backups would back up entire files, put it on another device, as opposed to sector-based, where it looked like looked at a disk and see what parts of the disk had changed. So a little more low level, and we'll talk about some other products later that do that. Again, these are largely local. Um, they could restore entire systems, but they really had a, a preference for the hardware being the same as what you started with. Uh, a lot of these systems have said that they would go to different types of hardware, but we haven't had really good success with those. Okay, some of the legacy image-based uh, systems. Now, again, these are where it goes to the hard drive and looks for different sectors and only backups those sectors of the disk that have changed. Um, Cronus is a big one of those. Um, these primarily went out to hard drives, uh, network attack storage. Um, largely local only, and again, limited uh, disaster recovery at the system level. All right, so more of a current-based image backup. Veeam is a big one out there. Uh, you may have heard of them. They, they were primarily targeted at external hard drives, but have also added um, sync to cloud now as well. Uh, image-based, Veeam specifically was originally targeted at virtual machines only. So you, most of you probably have heard about servers where you do virtualization. So inside one physical server, you have many virtual machines running. And that used to only work with those virtual machines. They've recently added uh, bare metal servers. By bare metal, I mean the operating system running right on the physical server instead of inside a, a VM uh, model. Um, the VM focus that they had allowed for much faster and more flexible disaster recovery, being able to just restore uh, a VM to hardware and fire it up. Um, and there's some limited uh, business con continuity features inside of it as well. All right, um, some of the higher end uh, image-based systems that have more of a business continuity focus, like Datto or Barracuda, um, they generally work with either hypervisor or bare metal machines, uh, provide local or cloud virtualization uh, for near instant recovery of failed servers. So it's an important term there, the virtu virtualization. That's the ability of your backup device to independently on its own fire up an image of a server that was on another piece of hardware. So that if this one server uh, catches on fire, you can actually bring up those servers in this different hardware 
and have it running just like it was on the original server. On these, you can generally do graceful fail back too. So you get the hardware back, you restore it, and then you can move all your VMs onto that replacement hardware with very little downtime. These also offer a whole bunch of, of these kind of funny acronym terms. Uh, PETA, physical, that's physical to physical, so you want to go from one physical server to another one, different drivers and everything, and it knows how to inject the right drivers into it, move it. Uh, physical to virtual, that's a very common one when you're trying to do server consolidation. You've got a bunch of physical servers and you want to consolidate them all into one uh, hypervisor with VMs inside. You can also do virtual to physical, see that very rarely, as well as virtual to virtual if you're trying to upgrade to a different type of virtual machine. All right, so, um, here's one predominant uh, cloud-based system that you may hear more about. Microsoft is pushing this really hard. It's the Azure uh, Cloud Backup. Um, in theory, it's very low cost, but I would never want to have one of these services without uh, live support from the provider. So this does have a minimum of $300 a month cost on it. Um, it is local and cloud, so it makes a local image, and then it will also upload to the Azure Cloud. And one of the things Microsoft is uh, promoting with this is that it's a migration path to moving everything to the cloud. So you, you have all your servers in your server closet backed up to the Azure Cloud, and then at some point you can flip a switch and fire up all those machines in the Azure Cloud, and suddenly your business has been transformed to it in the cloud uh, framework. All right, so here's a BDR systems acronym for uh, backup and disaster recovery, uh, primarily offered through IT companies. Um, these are often uh, local backups, and the feature sets from them can be very different. So if you have an IT company that's providing that sort of functionality, you want to make sure that these things that I'm going to talk about you question, because they can have vastly different capabilities, and they may not meet your business requirements that we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, some of them have virtualization and some of them have business continuity capabilities. All right, so here's another one. So you have IaaS, Infrastructure as a Service. So this is essentially a model where you move your servers from your local into the cloud, just like the Azure uh, cloud. Uh, AWS, Amazon Web Services, is also another common one that's out there. Um, Google is probably the third tier, very far, and then there's, there's a host of others with much less uh, recognition. So within that, there's a couple levels of backup and redundancy that you can get. Uh, the first level is single zone redundancy. So you have your servers in some data center, you know, they've got to exist in some physical server somewhere, uh, say like, you know, Amazon has one in Portland, I think. So if you enable this feature, it'll actually copy your, all your virtual machines onto two different hardware sets so that if one of the hardware sets fail, it will continue to run. And they pretty much give that to you for free, but you have to design right for it. Um, the other one, much more involved and much more reliable, is the geographically redundant. Price is about double because you're running two separate instances in different parts of the country. Um, and it's a very large effort to get that going. You have to tie in um, global DNS and all these other features so that it will fail over to that other data center. Um, but this does protect, protect against local outages um, and provider reboots, which is, I'll bring this little point up, if you go to the cloud, you don't have physical control over those servers anymore. And they will, from time to time, reboot their servers, though your server, when it, fit, when it uh, benefits them. Some services are better about notifying you. Amazon's pretty good. Microsoft will just do it without notice. Um, so this would provide you, protect you against that. Um, doesn't happen very often, but it does happen occasionally, and you have to factor that into whatever your plans are. So very large scale, so you have a, a very large need 
the, the solution then is replicated data centers. So you have something um, in a local data center here, and you have another copy running in, in Las Vegas, and you have there's specialized software that will keep them in sync. So if your data center here goes down, it'll it'll fail over to the one in your in your alternate center. It's kind of like a homegrown version of the Amazon geographically redundant. And then there's a do-it-yourself uh, solutions. Um, these take all sorts of different forms, and uh, I've seen them done in all different ways. Uh, often it's done by a techie in a small business who's trying to reduce cost. Um, so Amazon has S3 and Glacier as two different data storage mechanisms. These, there's Azure uh, storage as well. Uh, Cloudberry is kind of a, a front end you can put on those to do backups and then it, it backs up to whatever storage provider you put onto it. There, there's lots more of these. Um, if, if you have somebody in your company doing one of these for you, make sure that it, there's the reliability and it meets your business requirements. So in talking all of this, we kind of have this matrix now of the different type of backup solutions and where they're provided. So file only, um, system, file system type backups, uh, image where you do uh, machine virtualization, and redundant, whether that be geographically redundant or a data center. So let's look a little bit more into data reco uh, disaster recovery. So there's really four levels of disaster recovery. Uh, device, loss of a, a piece of equipment. Could be firewall, network, uh, switch, but generally it's a server. Um, and that can be happened due to hardware failure, um, such as a controller, uh, going out and corrupting all your data so you can't bring the, the data up even on another server. Um, an accident, somebody spills coffee onto your motherboard, or theft. Um, the other next level is at the site level. Um, loss of all the equipment due to a fire or theft. We actually see probably theft happen more often than we see fire. Um, and then at the third level, you have regional. Earthquake, flood, hurricane. Uh, we, we have a client down in Florida, and probably once every few years, they have to shut down their facility due to a, to a hurricane going through. Now, they haven't necessarily experienced a disaster of their machines being destroyed, but the whole infrastructure goes out and they have to shut down their business because they just, everything's shut down. Um, one point I'll say about these two between site and regional is that um, from, a, from a business standpoint, people are a lot more forgiving when you're the target of a regional disaster. If there's an earthquake, people understand you're not down that you're down and not operating. If it's a site level, if you had a site uh, fire, not so forgiving because everything everything else is up and running. Um, so that may have an impact on what your uh, some of your business requirements are in those situations. And the last one's kind of a newer one, um, provider level. So if you have your stuff out in the cloud, um, what's you know what are, what are you going to do if you lose that service? And how good are they? at actually making sure that their services stay available to you. For larger services, Amazon, Azure, they have fairly large redundant data centers and all that, but in smaller ones, if you're dealing with a line of business application that's hosted in the cloud, you should be asking these all these questions because there's probably a much higher likelihood that they're going to have some local disaster without the redundancy and that means you can't conduct business in whatever application you're using. Okay, so let's look at some of these key terms in, in disaster recovery and the business requirements. Two main things. Uh, recovery point objective. So how old can your data be to keep conducting business? So if you're taking backups off-site, you have an old external hard drive that you take off-site at once every quarter, well, your data could be up to a three months old. Can you conduct business with data that's three months old? That's a question you need to ask yourself. The other one is rec recovery time objective. How soon do you need back in business to keep your business going? 
So, you know, for larger businesses, that RTO is generally much shorter, and they have much more infrastructure to, to deal with. So it becomes a, a compound effect. Um, we'll go into some of these in some scenarios that we'll talk about. Okay, calculating the cost of the disaster. There's three main aspects that you have to consider in calculating the cost. First is the direct revenue loss, revenue that is irrevocably lost between the disaster occurs and when your disaster recovery is in effect. Um, so, I mean, if you're a retail shop, people coming to your door can't serve business, they just go away and go somewhere else. If you have electronic uh, orders coming in um, that has to be uh, acknowledged to be accepted, you're not gonna be able to accept them then, and they just may go to a different provider. Likewise, if you're a consulting firm and you sell by the hour, you know, once this hour is gone, you can't charge for that again. It's just gone. It's lost revenue. The other aspect is internal costs. What are the costs being incurred during a disaster without benefit to the organization? So you may have idle employees that you're still paying, but they're there doing nothing. Uh, there's facilities expenses. You're still paying rent on, on your structure and their services. You still pay for your phone service, your internet service, all those are hourly expenses that continue to occur. And the third one, much softer, but probably much more impactful, is the post-disaster revenue losses due to loss of professional reputation, diminished perceived reliability, and loss of confidence to deliver. So if you have an extended outage, somebody may say, well, I'm just not gonna buy from them because I just don't, can't trust they're gonna be up. Or they may have just gone to a different provider, and now that they're up and running, they just continue on with them. All right, so now the current wisdom on how to do backups. So the, the, the current thinking is you should follow the 3 two, one rule. So you want to have at least three copies of your data, your primary, a backup, and a backup of your backup. Um, store the copies on two different media. Make sure that you know you don't have both copies on the same hard drive that can just go away. And when you can, keep one off-site so that if you have a site-level disaster, you can still get to it. Um, okay, some questions now to ask yourselves. Uh, is file backup sufficient? Many small businesses it is. It is. You just don't need to restore a whole server if something happens. All you need is your most critical files. Um, do you have complete servers you need to restore? So that's kind of a companion to the first question. You know, if, if you need to restore the operating system, the policies, everything on it, be sure you have a system level backup going on. How much data do you have to backup? So you have to combine that with how much, how, what your bandwidth is to see how long it's gonna take you to recover data if you need to do an offsite restore. Um, as well as that's the scale of the backup solution you may need even locally. If on the cl cloud, how long to restore? Okay, so you know you have a you have a big backup and you lose your primary. How long is it going to take here? Does that meet your recovery time objective, your RTO? And how old can your data be to continue operations? Okay, talk about that RTO. Okay, how do you fail back to your original equipment once you back up and running? So you have, an, you have a server that you put up and you're running, some older server you, you picked up somewhere just to keep you up and running, okay. So your primary server has been, been back now, how do you re go back from that server to your primary one? Um, and when's the last time you've tested your systems to be sure it's operating correctly? Tested a file restore, tested a SQL database restore, um, tested full system restores. Um, you know, you want to make sure that your backups are actually running. All right, so this one is kind of an in-your-face question, but I can't tell you how many businesses I've seen where this is the case. You know, is your current backup system just a feel-good system, or is it a real business system? You know, oh, yeah, I'm backed up. Happen, you know, my backups go off every night. Well, they may not be going back up every night if you're not testing them and they may not meet your business requirements. So kind of a, a head in the sand sort of uh, 
mechanism. You just want to feel like you have a backup, but you don't really have a backup that meets your needs. All right, let's look at some scenarios and what's a, what would be a good solution for them. So first one, small insurance office uh, with three employees. Their uh, most fo customer files are on a local, uh, are on the corporate cloud, cloud server. So their insurance agency, so they upload most of their cre critical customer files to the cloud. The only thing that's local is like marketing, um, generally not so critical files. They could be lost for a week without any business or the disruption. Um, their end connections, 25, 20 megabits down, five up, um, have about 40 gigs of files, and no real significant security concern. Everyone shares everything. So from that, their recovery point objective, how old their data can be, one week. So if their, data, if their backup's a week old, they don't care. Um, recovery time objective, again, how quickly they need to have that data back, about one week. And their time to download all the files, about four and a half hours. So everything fits here. So we look at these different scenarios. If they have a device level failure, everything works in this, any one of those. Um, but if they have a regional disaster, then they're not going to have access to any of the local devices. So you have to look for cloud uh, solutions. Um, and if their provider goes out well, they're kind of just stuck. So if their insurance company actually has an outage, that doesn't meet, that doesn't deal with any of the art business requirements that we had at the front because that's kind of their critical, but they're stuck. I mean, they have to rely upon their, their mother company to provide that service. So a, a good solution for this company, again, the goal is to find the least, uh, the least expensive, least um, effort required to get the, the solution that fits your needs. And in this case, something like Microsoft OneDrive, uh, Google Drive, or Dropbox would probably work just fine for you. All right, import export office with 10 employees. Um, most customer files on a local uh, single server. Um, files on the share are critical to business operation. Files can't be more than a day old, and they could live without the files for three days before uh, there's a business disruption. 30 megs down, 10 megs up, 700 gigs of file. And they do have security on a Windows uh, file, on a Windows uh, domain controller. So translating that to business needs, they have a recovery point objective of one day, a recovery time objective of three days, and a time to download all files of 53 hours. So when you look at this, a device level uh, disaster is um, files aren't gonna work because they have to restore entire systems. They have to be able to recover that Windows server with all their uh, credential information inside of it. Um, and so a system level backup would probably work, as would the higher level solutions. In a site regional, all the local isn't going to work. So they're kind of left with that, those solutions there. And provider's not really applicable here because they don't have a cloud solution in effect. So appropriate solution for this might be the Veeam solution that we talked about earlier with Cloud Connect so that they, the uh, system backups are replicated to the cloud and you can pull them down as needed, or a da data alto. That's a particular model of da data that's lower cost and provides these same capabilities. The architectural firm with 30 employees, uh, three sh local servers, uh, file shares are critical, um, can't be older than two days, and only one day without unacceptable business uh, disruption. 50 megabits both directions and three terabytes of data and, uh, and authentication locally. So on this, we have a recovery point objective of two days. So the data files can be two days old, but they need to be back up within one day of the disaster to keep conducting business. The time to download all files, 140 hours. So roughly a little less than a week. So device level, uh, file only won't work because they have to do systems. 
System, we don't know. It depends on what type of system solution they pick, because it may not be able to get them back up in that time. Depends if they need another server, if they do have another server available, um, you're probably not going to go out to eBay, find a server, get it in, and set it up in, in two days a day. So you're probably looking more like at one of these that does a machine, local virtualization, machine virtualization, so you can fire up a replica of your server locally and have it available. Site regional, okay, again, your local copies aren't going to work in those, so then you're looking at a cloud, either uh, image or redundant solution. And provider, not really applicable here. So here, you're trying to get the lowest cost solution um, that fits your business needs. So these, the, a data service, that's a higher model than the one I talked about before. Um, and possibly being with Cloud Connect if you had prepared properly to have the right equipment available on site. All right, scenario number four, manufacturing headquarters with 100 employees, uh, files, and line of business applications. So now we have applications, local applications now that are critical too. Um, they can't be more than two hours old, and they can't ship product if, if their servers are down. So, and they have a connection of 100 megs and five terabytes of data. So here you have a RPO, recovery point objective of two hours. Uh, a recovery time objective of just four hours, and a time to download all files, again, uh, about half a week, but more than half a week. So device level, the system's not going to work because you're not going to get that back up in four hours. So machine virtualization, local virtualization is what you're going to want to look at, as well as a redundant system. Site regional. Uh, Cloud virtualization or cloud redundant. And provider, again, not really applicable here. So again, here, probably the best solution is going to be a data series or similar type product. Uh, so local virtualization, fire up the machines right away, and you're off and running. When your servers are backed up, you can cover to those as well. And you can, re and you can fire up your servers in the cloud here. So if your site goes down, you can fire up all the servers in the cloud, have everyone connect into there, and continue conduct, conducting business. All right, number five, a global 24-7 e-commerce provider with infrastructure as a service in the cloud. So a little bit different take on it. Revenue generating applications are strictly in the cloud, so it's strictly a cloud environment, um, and something like uh, Amazon. And the, sort of the business requirement, they can never, services can never go down except for very limited maintenance schedules. So we have a recovery point of 10 minutes. So your data can't be more than 10 minutes old, and you have to be back up in five minutes if there's a disaster. So device level. Um, so here, the terms, you could construe them a little differently. Um, so if you're doing a local, um, if you have the single zone replicated, this would probably work for you, as long as you have that set up, as well as redundant uh, in the cloud systems. Site regional, you're just down to this geographically um, distributed cloud uh, services. And Question mark on this provider, if, if you have Amazon and you have geographically distributed redundancy, well, if Amazon's having a general outage, you know, something about their infrastructure's fail, even that redundant data centers may not help. Very, very rare. So you have, as a business owner, you have to, to uh, weigh these things on what the cost uh, benefit analysis is. So most likely for these, a geographically redundant uh, service is going to be. Very expensive, complex to set up, but necessary for their business model. Now we'll look at one final one. Large law firm with 3,000 locations, five regional offices. Things are critical, 100 terabytes of data. 
Um, all staff on salary and can't build without server infrastructure. Um, you have a recovery point objective of one day, recovery time objective of one half hour, time to download all files, 97 days. So that tells you something right there that a lot of this stuff is just not viable. So in a device case, um, this machine virtualization will work as long as it's local, as well as redundant data centers. Um, but if you have a local disaster, assuming that these are in a colo and the colo has some bad disaster, the only thing that's going to help is a redundant data center. So that's your answer there. It's pretty straightforward. Very expensive, complex to set up, but in this large of an operation, it's a small cost compared to their overall uh, cost of business. All right, questions. I know I threw a lot at you there, uh, a lot of complex issues. Um, again, these are very new. Um, there, there's a wide ranging uh, set of solutions, pricing on all of them, and it, um, you have to think through all these issues to make sure that you can uh, survive these issues if you don't want to be part of that 40% uh, that never reopen your door.